one thing we can look at very quickly, if I take the output of the character stream and I put it into an unpack folder node, uh, and it's important uh, to remember that this unpack folder is going to unpack everything um, unless you give it a pattern. And if you have a very, very heavy piece of geometry, it's going to try to unpack that into a graph, which is not going to be pleasant. Um, so be specific about what you want to extract here. And you can do that if I select this. And you can use this little selector uh, to select what you want, usually in a rig tree. So the selector will um, activate kind of the rig tree here and you can select what you want and so you can say base rig accept. Now I'm looking at an unpacked folder and so it doesn't have a rig tree anymore that's why it's giving me this little error. But here we are here is our unpacked rig and if we wanted to look at that we could of course open up the Apex network view and this is exactly what we saw when we were looking at um, the deform. We have our incoming parameters. We have a base skeleton, translate, rotate, scale, and a base shape, our transform object, and our bone deform. And we can then add an edit graph to that. And now you can see that we can move this stuff around and our geometry in, in the viewport is actually moving around because again um, this geometry is representing these nodes so you can have a little bit of fun doing that but let's get back to our rig so we have our deform and we can uh, move this box around using that root joint but we don't have a control for it and so let's Give ourselves a control and we're going to use the um, apex configure control sop so if we add one of those and if i display this and enter into the viewport now i have uh, this circle which i can select and that will then allow me to you know animate this thing so that's what we want and how do we define that well, the configure controls is a pretty cool little SOP. Uh, we can make a number of configurations, as many as we want. Um, and all I did really was say, um, this says not everything. So, you know, don't do anything to any joint, but then I specified the root joint. So I wanna add a control to the root. And then we have this use shape override. So this means, it currently does whatever shape it has i want you to override that with something else and in the shape override i have circle underscore wires but if i go to this drop down on the right hand side oops you can see that i have lots of different kinds of control objects and these are just uh, basic little geometry um, and there are ways that you can create custom ones of these uh, but there's lots of built-in ones that are pretty useful. So I chose circle wires. And then I can use shape offset. Uh, because by default, let's say if I put these all back to zero. You can see that it's oriented uh, along Z. Uh, and it's very small. So I want to rotate it, say, at negative 90. And 15, I think, was the right size. Um, so again, as I mentioned earlier, Apex being in beta, there are little things like this that, that hopefully will be improved uh, as we get toward gold uh, so that the default size of these controls will be a little more manageable. You may not have to make these little adjustments all the time. Uh, but you can do other things like color, make it red. Um, we can create limits. So we can say, you know, min and max of various different axes. We can do lots of cool things with these controls. So now we have our control. And if I want to see uh, what changes Apex has made to our rig, 
uh, we can use the unpack folder and then go to our geometry spreadsheet and here we can see in our properties we can see that a new property has been created we can inspect that and if we look at this we can see basically a description uh, of the control that we created we can see that circle wires is there in shape override um, the offset is this is the transform scale of 15 uh, the color is red so it's being defined here in this uh, in this property we'll have a look at um, how to create those in in another way in another video but the, the thing to remember here is that again with our apex rig we're adding bits of graph to our overall rig and we're not evaluating it at all we're just defining it and later when we're in the animate state that's where we're going to call on these functions um, to do the kinds of things that we want to do so we've talked about how this graph is geometry and uh, we have this geometry box and we have geometry um, joints. Can we just save that off to disk and that's our character? Yes, we can. So I've just put a little rock geometry here. I've said the output file should be minimal bgeo.sc. The .sc is simply a, a compressed version of the bgeo. And then I can just bring it in like that and nothing has changed. If I want to animate with this asset, um, and this course is only about rigging, there'll be um, much more uh, tutorials and, and master classes and whatnot on animation in the future. Uh, but very, very briefly, I've brought in my character, uh, or prop, or whatever you want to call it, and then I can add the character to a scene using the scene add character. I give it a name. In this case, I'm just giving it the name of minimal. And now it's a part of a scene. And I can use the scene animate to animate the character. And you can see that we have the controls here uh, with all of the regular kind of functionality that you would expect in, in animation. But additionally, if you look at the inputs and outputs on our scene add character, the first input, we mouse over it, is a scene. Well, we don't have a scene, so we're really we're creating a scene. But now that we have a scene and we want to add another character, we can use another scene add character, append that to the existing scene, and then just add the character again, or add a different character or a different prop. And in this scene add character, all we have to do is give it a unique name. And the reason we give it a unique name is so the scene animate uh, can differentiate them because we know that our control object uh, has the same name. So scene animate, I'll just reset all. Um, so now I have two characters or two assets, but well, they're on top of one another. So it's difficult to, to extract them. But if I look at my controls, I open that up. I have minimal and I have minimal sad. That was the name that I gave to the second character. So I can grab minimal, minimal sad. And now I can animate both of these uh, in this scene. So that's a very quick overview of how to set up a piece of geometry that's captured with um, a skeleton, a simple one, how to add some auto rig components, how to configure a control, how to write that out to disk, bring it back and animate it.
and that's uh, rigging and animating an apex. In the next video, we'll add some functionality to this asset, and we'll have a look at some other auto-rig components.